Hello and welcome. Now, in my last video, I did mention how I was trying to work out whether I could make my own LFP batteries, i.e. lithium iron phosphate batteries, to power the next armoured exoskeleton like the previous Pathfinder you can see behind me. And in short, it's doable, but I don't think it's going to be worth it, and I'll explain why now. But first, I'll go over the internals of an LFP battery and how you can make them. So I'll go over this little graphic that I've made. This is kind of like an internal cross-section of an LFP battery, or at least one of the layers of an LFP battery. So the golden slice is a current collector, i.e. the positive terminal. It's typically a ribbon of aluminium foil. Well, you then have a coating, which is your cathode, and that coating is the lithium iron phosphate. Now, I've made this graphic to accurately represent the thickness of each of the materials as well. These thicknesses can vary quite a lot when I researched it. It can vary quite a lot depending on what purpose you're having the battery for, whether it's a high discharge, high charge, or just high like current content while being lightweight. But this is quite an accurate visualization from what I've been able to find. So that aluminium foil is typically around 20 micrometers. And then the lithium ion phosphate that is then coated on top of that copper foil is typically up to 200 micrometers. And then on top of that cathode layer, there's then the electrolyte layer, which can be described as a lithium salt Typically, it seems to be lithium hexafluoride phosphate, I believe. That is typically around 50 micrometers thick. And then we go to the other side of it, and you have your negative terminal, your other current collector, which again is around the same thickness of 20 to 50 micrometers. And on top of that, you then have the anode layer on top of it, which is typically graphite and around 100 micrometers. These are all then sandwiched together. And then the layers that you see on the outside are basically an insulation layer. We typically call it a surface separator. Now, as you've guessed, these are all incredibly thin. And it's easier to think of, in particular, the cathode, the anode, and the electrolyte as not really being like slabs of material or anything, but more thinking of it as like a coat of paint. You'll also notice that parts of the current collectors, both the positive and the negative, stick out a little bit from the top and the bottom. That is so you can have the actual full battery terminal fastened to the top and bottom without getting a, a short circuit between them both. So we'll just go over to the other graphic. This is how I visualise putting one together. I am 99% sure this is actually how these types of batteries are made. If you go on any How Is It Made videos, this is the type of setup you see done. The only problem is with visualising it on the machines that are doing it. They're doing it that fast, you can't really see what's actually going on. So to actually manufacture a battery and put all these layers together, this is what I'm thinking. So on the left, you've got the aluminium foil, which kind of acts as its own conveyor belt. The cathode is then coated onto the copper foil. If you choose to do any research on this, what you might find is the terminology just kind of isn't in basically layman's terms. It's not in everyday language, let's say. So they're calling the cathode layer, the electrolyte layer, and the anode layer a slurry that is then having additives added to it and bonding agents where it is then applied onto the foil. Now, in layman's terms, what it really is, it's a coating, kind of like a paint, kind of like a 2K epoxy style paint, where you then have bonding agents added to it and then it's basically sprayed evenly over the top of the foil. That's certainly the best way to think about it, in my opinion. Now, a crucial thing that kept popping up is to get the better quality of battery and a safer battery, you really need to make sure that each layer is fully dried onto the foil before applying the next one. So there'd have to be some type of heating element or UV light to basically make sure that that cathode is fully dry before the next layer is applied. So again, as that foil gets pulled along, it gets the cathode layer on, dried, and then it gets the electrolyte layer on and dried straight over the top. And then on an opposing belt system for the negative current collector, that then has the anode graphite then coated on the same, dried. That will then be pulled around and sandwiched onto the copper foil layer where it then would have the surface separators, i.e. the insulation applied and then far dried. And then that would get all coiled up into a nice tightly wound battery. I figured to do this, a lot of it is set up and then timing which I don't really think is that hard to achieve because you can just use step motors and you know like basic electronics to get the timing right. It'd probably be difficult to get the coatings to layer up evenly. And I'm certain that there's some trial and error in getting it dry and all of this stuff, obviously a lot of trial and error doing it full stop. 
But I do actually think doing your own lithium iron phosphate batteries DIY is actually a possibility. And it'd certainly be a fun project to do. But then before I started to research the finer details, of which some of you might know more about this than me, so you probably know that I'm, I'll be missing a few things here. But before I got to that point, I then started researching, right, how can I get these raw materials? So how can I get lithium iron phosphate and so on? And this is where it comes to the point where I don't think it's worth it. For the size of battery that I'm going to need for that, it's a little bit unknown at the minute, but either way, it's going to be between 10 and 20 kilos. So I can't really be buying this stuff by the gram, I need to buy it by the kilo. Now to buy like regular finished battery cells, whether it's something like 18650s or, or other types of battery cells you can buy, I'll be looking at between, I think I worked out, between four to 1200 pounds for a battery pack for the next suit, which I know that's quite the variation in price point, but that's basically what I found. So either way, if I'm to try and make my own batteries from scratch, I need to get them raw materials for like, about 150 quid, if not less, to make it worthwhile. And while the graphite's cheap, the aluminium or foil will be cheap, the copper foil will most likely be cheap, the separator layers will be cheap. The things that aren't cheap is the lithium ion phosphate and the lithium hexafluoride phosphate. I think the best price I've seen for lithium ion phosphate is about 160 pound per 500 grams. Now the typical split in weight for these things is you're going to be looking at about 40% of it, 30-40% of it is lithium ion phosphate and then I think it was around 20% for the electrolyte which means if it's a 10 kilo battery I need roughly 4 kilos of lithium ion phosphate and 160 quid for 500 grams that would be around £1,200 just for the lithium phos ion phosphate. I've tried to email suppliers of lithium products in the UK and so far I haven't got a response probably because they think I'm mental. And yeah, that is why, while well, I think it is actually doable to do it, there's just kind of no point in bothering with it. But maybe to one day I'll be able to revisit it. As for the actuators that I did mention in the previous video, uh, videos for them should be coming out soon. I have had some delay because basically I bought very terrible copper enamel wire. That set it back quite a bit. Uh, and I'm actually now on version 2 of both types. So it has took longer than I wanted, but I have had progress. I've also made some more progress with printing the next pieces for the next prototype. These, of course, just being an hour layer to cast the armour into. But I think they're coming along pretty well. So I hope you found this little video informative. I've mainly done it because I couldn't really find that many YouTube videos on like how to actually make a lithium-ion battery like raw out. Also, I'll note that uh, the process for regular lithium ion, I lithium ion with nickel and cobalt in is basically the same thing, including the layer thicknesses, they're all roughly the same. Now, I know a lot of the people who watch this channel are pretty well informed, frankly, and you know quite a lot. If there are little details of this that I've missed that you think are relevant or interesting, feel free to put them in the comments. I'll certainly try and read them and learn, and there might be someone else who comes across it and learns something as well. Like I say, I'm sure there's extra details that I've missed, like, like exactly how the coatings are dried so quickly. If you see how fast these machines move that are making the batteries, these coatings get dried like immediately. And perhaps someone knows something else about the bonding agents and the additives, etc. And that brings us to the end of the video. Please like and subscribe if you want, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.